Okay, good morning, everybody. Well, wow, that, that, that was quite loud. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. Everybody's awake. That's great to see and hear. Uh, welcome to Gorse Hill. Uh, my name's Matt, for those who don't know me. Uh, I'll be leaving us this morning, and I'm pleased to be able to welcome Sue uh, and her husband from Rodbourne, Cheney Baptist, and Sue will be sharing with us um, later on in today's service. Um, what was I going to say? Let's pray, shall we? Let's pray. That's a good way to start. Father God, we thank you that we can come together to meet with each other, but ultimately to meet with you. Lord, we thank you that we have the ability to come freely to meet in public. Lord, help us this morning to, to make the most of this opportunity, to not hold things back, but to give you our all, to, to worship you in spirit and in truth, to listen to your word intensively, and really take it on board so that we leave this place changed people, closer to you, with a greater hunger to be like you. Amen. We're going to start our time together in a bit of praise and worship because it's great to be able to meet together and worship our God. So I invite you, if you're able to, uh, let's stand. There's some musical instruments and flags in the corner if you want to do that. That's another way of expressing our worship. Um, So let's stand and sing. Oh, 
ourselves, our time, our hearts. Lord, we love you and we want to praise you for who you are. Amen. Amen. Okay, do you take a seat? Okay, we've got a couple of notices. Um, just quickly, uh, last Sunday evening we had our prayer and praise evening and as part of that we produced um, this really useful prayer point sheet. Um, It's basically listing loads of topics for prayer, both internally as a church family, but also in the local community, and also more nationally and internationally. Um, So there's a bunch of them on the side um, as you come into the church. So do grab one at the end of the service, take it home, and pray over these points. It's not reserved for the Sunday evening, um, but it's an opportunity to really um, gather together in prayer wherever we are, and pray into these different points. Um, So I encourage you to to pick one up on your way out today. Um, Similarly, uh, hopefully you've seen uh, the weekly this week, either via email or in paper form. Um, Again, maybe we say this too much, but I don't think we do, so no apologies. Um, Do pay attention to what it says. We produce it for a reason. It's not just to do something. It's there to provide information as to what's going on in the church family uh, in the weeks ahead, and also things to pray for and ways to get involved in the fellowship. And at the moment, there are a number of different uh, opportunities um, that we need to try and fill. So do consider and prayerfully consider what it, which, how, how 
Um, are you serving the church at the moment? Is there space for you to do more, something different? So do, do uh, take a read of that and yeah, see what you can do to kind of step up uh, and get involved. And Dave, if you want to come up for the fun day. Morning, everyone. Morning. Fun day is two weeks tomorrow. Uh, thank you to everyone who has already signed up uh, to join a team. That's brilliant. Also, thank you to whoever has started the clothes collection uh, in the office for the vintage shop. Um, there are still uh, a couple of teams, three teams really, that need uh, more helpers. We need more people who are willing to meet on the wreck at eight o'clock in the morning and set everything up. Um, we need more people to help serve on the barbecue, not to cook the burgers, uh, but to help uh, serve them. Uh, and also, we definitely need more helpers on Pete Morris's inflatables team. Okay, so inflatables, uh, early morning setup, um, and serving on the barbecue. And if you have been keeping any clothes or shoes or trainers or anything that you're going to donate for the vintage shop, uh, there is a collection area in the office. Our, our dip in there every few days and, and sort it all out so if you can put it there's a box at the moment but it might spill over um, that'd be brilliant if you want to be on one of those teams but you haven't had a chance to sign up yet come and see me afterwards that'd be great uh, that's it for a fun day notice uh, inferno uh, there's no inferno group upstairs today uh, but you're coming through into the main hall uh, and helping us uh, run kids zone <laughs> that'd be really helpful <laughs> uh, thank you Thank you, David. Um, I was on Pete's inflatable team last year, and I can vouch that you will have the time of your life. It is without doubt the best way of serving the Lord. So if you want to do that, then I, yeah, speak to Pete. Um, it's a great time. Um, let's just pray for those things, shall we? Father God, we thank you for the, for the many different ways that we um, see your kingdom coming in this community. And we particularly, we pray for the fun day. Lord, so much time and energy goes into it, and it's not about what we get out of it, but it's about what you can do through it. And so, Father, I pray that in these next few weeks, as the final preparations take place, uh, we get the, the volunteers that we need, um, but above all, that you prepare the way ahead of us, that you prepare hearts to receive something from you, um, and use us as your church here in this Gorsall community to really um, be your mouthpiece uh, in this place. So we just pray your blessing over that day. Uh, we pray for good weather. We pray for good spirits um, and opportunities to share something of your word. Amen. Okay, we're going to take up our offering now. Um, if you're visiting, let the bags pass you by. This is something that as a church family we feel that we need to do as our way of giving something back uh, to God. So if those who are serving can uh, wait upon us now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts given today. We thank you for the gifts given through other means. And we just pray that you bless, 
Bless these gifts and help us to know how to use them to further your kingdom. Lord, give us that wisdom, give us that insight. Um, Help us to really follow your leading. We thank you for all that you bless us with as a church and individually. And we just pray that we can see this as our way of giving something that you've given us back to you. Father, we too, we pray for the children and the young people. Uh, We pray that they can have a great time together this, this morning. Pray that they can learn something of you, be excited about you and what it means to be in a relationship with you. Lord, be with the, the helpers and the leaders, um, and just help that time to be a real fun time where they can just enjoy being together, uh, learning more about you. Amen. Okay, so a reminder, kids, you're all downstairs in the hall today, okay? Kresh is upstairs still, though, I believe. We're going to continue in our worship uh, through a few more songs before Sue comes to uh, share with us. Um, And again, this time is between yourself and God, um, and that might look different for different people, and that's absolutely fine. This is us just being together in an atmosphere of worship and praise. So if you you want to pray, um, there'll be space to do that between songs. If you want to just be still, then go ahead and be still. Um, But let's just use this time to really... Just lay everything at the foot of the cross. And again, for each of us, that might be something different. Um, But let's just enter into um, his presence, as we have done already today, and give him our all.
go to you, Lord, this morning. We glorify your precious holy name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We honor you. We rejoice in you. We celebrate you. Encourage us this morning, we pray. Be to us all that we need this morning as we give you our worship, even if that is through tears. Verse 2 again, find rest my soul in Christ alone, know his power in quietness and trust. And sometimes we put our trust in the wrong things, sometimes we look to different things other than God to, to fix things, to give us that peace, but we're reminded today that that can only come from God. So let's sing together again that verse, find rest my soul.
as that line says, you have always been there. And we can have confidence that you will always be there. No matter what we face, no matter what we're going through, no matter how hard it might be, you will always be there. And that might be hard to see sometimes, but help us this morning to be reminded that that is the truth. That even if we can't see you, you are there, guiding us and holding our hands. And we thank you for that. And Lord, as Sue comes now to to speak your word, we just pray that you bless the words that she speaks. Lord, may they be your words, and may we have the ears and the hearts to listen, not just as a cursory thing, but as a real intentional thing to, to see how we need to change, to see how we need to be more like you. Amen. Good morning, everybody. It's um, really lovely to be with you. And I bring you really warm greetings from Rob Bonchini Baptist Church just down the road. Um, It's great that we are all one, aren't we, in the Lord? We're all one. So we're meeting in different places, you know, across the town, across the country, across the world. But we're all one through the Lord Jesus Christ. So um, thank you for this morning. The worship was just wonderful. The prayers, I feel like you've almost done my word for me, to be honest. And um, that song we just sang, Great Is Your Faithfulness, I think is probably my all-time favourite. And I actually heard it for the first time here in this church when I came here to preach on, I think it was the life of David and about all the suffering that he went through. Uh, So it, it meant a lot to have that song because I think that is the words that I want to bring to you this morning is um, the theme is walking in the light, but it's all about keeping our eyes on Jesus and knowing that he is faithful. He has kept us from the beginning and he'll keep us to the end no matter what we go through, Um, especially in the trials. It's then that he will carry us. So hang on to that because we do see darkness in our world, but God is the light and we need to keep our eyes on him. So when I become emotional, it's when the Holy Spirit's moving, and it's usually when he wants to really impart a point to you both. So don't feel embarrassed for me. I I always say when I go and preach, my church actually feel cheated if I don't get emotional. (laughs) So um, just take this word to heart. I pray that it will bless you. I did bring it to Rob Boncini about three weeks ago, and when I was praying about what to bring this morning, I really felt that um, God wanted me to bring this word to you as well. So um, let's start looking at it. So the theme is walking in the light. And what came to mind is this theme because I truly believe with all my heart that Jesus is the light of the world and that he shines in the darkness no matter what form that darkness takes. And our focus needs to be on him and on him alone. And as we meet in church together each week, like we've done this morning, the time that we spend together should bring in his light and his life and freedom and healing and refreshment to our souls so that we can leave this place empowered, ignited with his light to keep us going and to take out to others. Our meeting together should build us up so that we can shed his light and life-changing power to all those that we meet. We have such power within us, brothers and sisters, such light within us that comes from the Holy Spirit. And each Sunday morning, we need to be empowered together as we worship God and focus on him alone. As the old hymn goes, turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in his wonderful face, and the things on earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. When Jesus walked on the earth, he said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And in John 12:46, Jesus says, 
I have come as a light into the world, that everyone who believes in me may not remain in darkness. Jesus came to bring light in the darkness. He didn't come to focus on the darkness, but to illuminate it and to transform it into light. If you light a single candle in a completely dark room, it will light it up and give a soft, glowing light. But the light that Jesus brings is like the sun in the day. The word used as light in both these passages literally means the light of the sun or the day. It is never quenched. I don't know about you, but when I spend time quietly with the Lord, reading his word or worshipping him, or being in church, like today, or other gatherings, worshipping the Lord and focusing on him, I begin to feel better. And any darkness or heaviness I may be feeling begins to lift as I focus on the Lord and take my eyes off my own situation and all the other situations around me, and I start looking at his light. The difficult or challenging situations don't disappear But somehow, readjusting my focus onto the Lord brings in his light and his presence. It brings it into the situation, and it gives me the strength to carry on. And um, I just felt that this morning as we were worshipping, that you could really feel God's presence and his spirit. And when we look to him, he, he lifts us up, doesn't he? He lifts our soul. So thank you, worship group, and thank you, congregation, for singing because to hear voices together is just so uplifting and it's so powerful and we're, we're praising God together and that, that we, we, we feel that, we feel that off each other as well. So keep singing, keep praising. I want to share something with you that I read recently online and it was written by a Christian lady who was working for a Christian organisation and she had become very drained by all the news and the great needs in society and indeed across the whole world. And she wrote the following words. Focus on Christ. Things have seemed bleak across the world for some time. Reading both mainstream and alternative news, dangers abound. As one person described it, it can seem like staring into the abyss. Yet we need to be so careful as our enemy Satan seeks to use all means possible to fill us with fear. He's happy to let us see evil plots or schemes at work if it will keep us focusing on those and not where we should be looking. For whatever goes on in this world, our main focus needs to be Jesus, his presence, his kingdom, his reign. We must seek to know him in all we do. Whatever darkness we come across in our own lives or online, we must bring everything to him. We need to seek to know what he would have us do, to know our part in his plan to bring light into the darkness. This is still this lady speaking. God has good plans. We don't know all of them. It may be that things will keep on getting worse until he comes again. Or it may be that, as has so often happened in the past, that he will use his church to keep bringing in more of his light into this world, to push the darkness back further and further until he comes again. But ultimately, he seeks to restore everything. Now, this lady's words really struck a chord with me. Because the more I look at the world and current situations and society and how it has become, the more gloomy I become. As so much of what is reported is darkness and bleakness, and it can really have a negative effect on the way I feel. It can make me feel despondent and lethargic at the way our world is going and where it's heading. And most of all, the way it's reported is so negative and fear-provoking. And media and many organisations just focus on the darkness and not on the light. This doesn't motivate me 
I find it demotivates me. And it makes me feel everything is hopeless and pointless, as evil is everywhere and overwhelming society. But this is not the truth. It's a lie from the enemy, Satan, who delights in wreaking havoc and destruction in people's lives and in demotivating all those who seek to help and bring comfort and the light of the Lord into a situation. But we can only do this if we stand firm and speak the words of Jesus into a situation and over a situation, as there is mighty power in the name of Jesus. And we need to, as his church, start invoking that power. It is our birthright. It is our inheritance. And we need to believe it, and we need to start doing it and living it out. 1 John 1, 5 to chapter 2, verse 6 is actually entitled Walking in the Light, and I'm going to read this to you now. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness... We lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, his son purifies us from all our sins. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar And his word has no place in our lives. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for our sins, but also for the sins of the whole world. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. So to walk in the light, we need to walk as Jesus did, to follow his example and to obey his commands. This is what will keep us walking in the light. It's the one straight, narrow path. So when darkness seems to be all around us, we need to focus on the light of the world, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. We need to walk in the light of Jesus who purifies us from all sin. Not just some sin, but all of it. Every single bit of it. And the wonderful news outlined in the scripture that I've just read is that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the other wonderful part is that it says that Jesus Christ the righteous, he speaks to God the Father in our defense. He is speaking for us. He's for us. Somebody prayed that. God is for us. Yes, that word came to me when I was preparing this talk. God is for us. We need to remember this when we're interceding about personal situations or world situations. Jesus is for us, our families, our town, our country, our world. He's the light in the darkness, and we are to walk in this light. Jesus gave us a new commandment to follow in John 13, 34 to 35. It says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. When we come into church to meet each week, this is what we want to experience, the light of God's love and care flowing out from each of us to one another. 
This is what will attract people to Jesus if they see Jesus in us. We want our churches to be places where God's light is experienced, felt and seen. So to walk in this light, we must love one another as Jesus has loved us. Psalm 119 and verse 105 tells us, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. So in order to walk in the light, we need to know and follow God's word daily for each situation we find ourselves in. Daily readings shed light into our minds, and it's best to start them at the beginning of the day, as this will set you on the right path for the rest of the day. There are so many options through written notes, online podcasts. The important thing is to get God's word into your heart and mind so that you can walk in it each day. And I remember listening to <clears throat> Anne Graham Lott speak at a conference many years ago called Just Give Me Jesus, and uh, she was encouraging us to start getting into our Bibles and to start doing daily readings. And she said to us, try to set time aside, but try to do them first thing in the morning to set you up for the day. And the way she explained it, she said, if you wait until the evening, it's like being in an orchestra and playing a violin, but tuning it up once the concert is over. And I thought, that's right, isn't it? We want to be be tuned up first thing in the morning. We want that word first thing in the morning so that we can then go out and put that into place. So it's just an encouragement to try and do that. I read last month in the um, UCB Word for Today notes the following passage, and the title of the day's day's reading was Start Memorising Scripture. And this is just a small part of that day's message, which really spoke to me. And it says, Eva Herman spent two years in a Nazi prison camp. She wrote how a young cellmate happened to recite the prayer of St. Teresa, Let nothing trouble you or disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things pass. God alone never changes. Patience can do all things. Whoever has God has everything. God alone suffices. When Eva saw how much this helped the girl, she began to repeat the prayer at the end of every day. Eva later wrote of her time in prison how it was transformed by those words that she had memorised. This illustrates that the words we carry in our minds are available to transform any given moment. So when there's a verse of scripture that speaks to you, stop and write it on a card or put it on a mirror in your bathroom or on your smartphone or calendar or in your car or listen to scripture being read on CDs or a podcast or on your phone. If you're a visual learner, light a candle and read these words. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. From 1 John 1, 5, that verse comes. Another suggestion I recently read um, was by a lovely lady called Jennifer Rees Larkham, and she encouraged us to pray the Psalms. And um, she'd taken Psalm 91 and she'd made it personal to her situation. So I would encourage you, if you're struggling, if there's things you're praying for, um, that you read Psalm 91 on your own at some point and just claim it for yourself and just let it be a light for you that brings healing and restoration for you and for those that you're praying for. And I want to read what she did and how she worded it. And she was actually praying into a situation for her granddaughter who was dangerously ill. So she said, Lord, I'm bringing my granddaughter into your secret place and snuggling her safely under your shadow. That was verse one. You are her safe place. That's verse two. You won't let Satan shoot her with his poisonous arrows. That's verse three. Wrap her around with the duvet of your comforting love. That's verse 4. And don't let her be frightened of all the medical procedures and painful tests. That's verse 5. She has given her heart to you, so I claim your promise of protection. That's verses 9 and 10. Surround her bed with your ministering angels. 
May they prevent any medical errors or dangerous infections. That's verses 11 to 12. She and her parents love you and honor your name, so I am trusting you to save them from disaster, O Lord. That's verse 14. We know you hear us when we pray. I believe you have complete power and authority over this situation. That's verse 15. So I declare your promise to give my granddaughter a long and useful life. That's verse 16. And then she wrote, I've carried this piece of paper around with me all day and declared it out loud wherever I've gone. If the neighbours think I've gone mad, that will be the least of my worries. Lots of psalms can be adapted and personalised like this. So why not pick one and use it for yourself? This is walking in God's light. This is walking in God's love. Don't miss out on all that he has for you and all that he wants to say to you by not reading the word. Because God speaks to us mainly through his word. You will read a scripture or you might sing a song with scripture words in it and they'll just speak to your heart. And that is how God speaks to us. So it's an absolute privilege. There are many places in the world where they are forbidden from reading God's word and they they do it in secret. So we have a privilege in this country. May, May we never lose it, I pray. May we never lose the freedom, the religious freedom that we have. So pick up your Bibles, pick up your notes and read, read God's word to you and let him speak to you. A key scripture that encourages me personally about walking in the light, even especially when I don't feel in the light, is Philippians 4, 4 to 8. And it was written by the Apostle Paul when he was in prison in Rome. Not at all sure what his future held. And he wrote to the Christians in Philippi, and part of his letter reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. And don't forget, this is a man in prison. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. He knew that even in prison, the Lord was near to him. And he's near to you. Whatever situation you find yourself in, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Pray to God. Be honest with him. Pour out your heart to him. You don't need fancy words. You just are speaking to God, your father who loves you. Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. Quite possibly, the key area to walking in the light is to try and do as Paul suggests and to think about all those positive things. And there are still many positive things for us to think about. Jesus is all these things. He brings light and life to all. And so let's keep looking at Jesus Let's keep looking up into his wonderful face as that old hymn goes. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things on earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Praise the Lord. Um, That song that we sang about, you know, the eagle, I will, you know, I'll, I'll rise up like the eagle. We sang it earlier. And... That's something that's always really helped me when I've had troubles, is if I see a bird of prey and I look, at, you have to look up, don't you, to see a bird of prey. And you just see it soaring on the heights and it's above everything. It's not troubled by the troubles of this world. And that's what encourages me to keep looking up, 
keep looking up to God and when you look up and you, if you imagine yourself soaring like that, you, you look down and everything seems so much smaller and insignificant from a height. And that's what God wants to do with us. He wants to lift us up in the shadow of his wings so that we can soar above all our problems and all our anxieties with him. We just need to keep looking up. So shall we pray? Dear Father, we thank you for your word. We just firstly thank you for the great freedom and the privilege that we have in this country that we can, we can purchase Bibles, we can see them online, we have so many daily notes, we have so much wonderful music online that talks about you. God, we are surrounded with a richness of messages about you that the Holy Spirit can bring alive in us and we thank you for that freedom and we just lift to you this morning all those that don't have that freedom and we pray for them Lord we pray that your Holy Spirit will sustain them and that those scriptures that they've memorized you will bring them to mind Lord and it will encourage them and Father I just pray that you will this morning just speak to our hearts Lord when we look at things that are so dark and gloomy that you will just remind us to keep looking on all those positive things that you encourage us to look on, to look up to you, to look at all those things that are praiseworthy, Lord, and of good report, and to start focusing on them, and to just remember that you are the light of the world, that you bring light into our darkness. So I just pray for anyone here today, Lord, who is experiencing sadness and darkness and anxiety, that, Father God, you will just touch them with your Holy Spirit. You will bring their peace. Lord, that they will turn their eyes upon you, that they will look to you, and, God, that you will just fill them with that sense that you are on the throne, you are in control, and, Lord, that you hold the world in your hands and that you are completely and utterly King of kings, Lord of lords, the mighty one, who has the power and the authority and who is our great protector, provider and our Lord. So Father, we just thank you for all that you bring to us as your children. And Father, we just entrust our lives and our loved ones to you this morning. And we just pray, Lord, let your will be done. We trust you. We believe in you. We put our hope in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. I think one, one of the challenges for each of us is to make sure that we are walking in the light. We haven't simply walked past tense because none of us have finished our journey yet. And so it's an active thing that we need to be doing. Um, and we're going to close our time with a song that is a challenge as well. Um, the chorus is, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. But then the verses are the challenge of, it's not just simply saying those things, it's what's the doing part. Um, I'll walk with you wherever you go, through tears and joy, I'll trust in you, and I will live in all of your ways and your promises forever. So that challenge of, we can't just say we believe in Jesus, we believe in God, but we've got to walk that walk um, in the light as we've been hearing today. So I invite you, if you're able to, let's stand and sing.
Yeah, Heavenly Father, we pray this morning that the words that we've sung, that the prayers that we've prayed and, and your word spoken to us, Lord, that that doesn't stay here as we leave, that we take that with us, all of it, that we don't just become Sunday Christians, but we take this through all of the week ahead and that we truly walk in your light so that others see you through us. Lord, equip us to have the desire and the motivation to read our Bibles more. Lord, help us to, to truly seek you in all that we do, not just for church things, but in all aspects of life, Lord. Help us to seek you and to put you first and our trust in you and you alone. Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Do stay behind and share in uh, tea and coffee and biscuits in the hall. Um, Yeah, thank you.